We shall begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Kindly take the Gospel of Luke. If you have your Bible with you, you could take Gospel of Luke. Chapter 13, verses 18 to 21. Gospel of Luke 13, 18 to 21. I shall read. Then Jesus said, What is the kingdom of God like? How can I illustrate it? It is like a tiny mustard seed that a man planted in a garden. It grows and becomes a tree, and the birds make nests in its branches. He also asked, What else is the kingdom of God like? It is like the yeast a woman used in making bread. Even though she put only a little yeast in three measures of flour, it permeated every part of the door. Let us pray. God our Father, at St. Paul's Bible College, we have come together for this evening monthly contact class on the parables and miracles of Jesus. As we reflect on the parables and the miracles of Jesus, which were always directed to the kingdom of God, we may learn the values of the kingdom such as values of liberty, freedom, equality, self-confidence, and courage, that we may continue to employ them in our lives, in our family. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Good. Good evening, everyone, once again. And Good welcome evening, to the online lecture. Good evening. Thank you for joining this lecture which is supposed to be on sunday the last sunday of every month this sunday on account of different programs many students express that they will not be able to participate and we have anticipated this lecture to friday and we have anticipated earlier as well some lectures and this lecture is available on youtube immediately after our presentation good thank you for joining despite the change of schedule and I welcome on behalf of the chairman to this online class. So today's topic is parables and miracles of Jesus. And we have a few new students here and few participants from elsewhere and great people amidst us. And I welcome everyone to this class. And we know about the class, the first 45 minutes, that is from 4 to 4.45. Then we'll have five minutes of break, then we'll resume and we go till 5.30. And before we initiate our parables and miracles of Jesus, the presentation, I would like to ask, like when you hear about the expression, parables and miracles of Jesus, what comes to your mind? Or what are the questions that you have when you hear about the parables and miracles of Jesus? Either about a particular parable or a miracle, our parables and miracles in general. You are welcome to share and present your first impressions. You could unmute and talk if you wish to. Or if you have any doubt on the parables and miracles of Jesus, which you have heard earlier, you could propose. Any quick first impression? Yes, Mr. Daryl. Father, I always wondered uh, why uh, Jesus spoke in parables, especially to people who are, you know, the poorest of the poor, in the sense uh, their understanding was, uh, you know, far, far lower, uh, I would say, not educated. Uh, and they always, in, in, in even his apostles, they always wondered what he was actually saying. So I always wondered why he wouldn't speak directly and why he wouldn't speak uh, the matter, you know, plainly as could be. OK. Thank you, Mr. Daryl. So Mr. Daryl underlines the purpose of Jesus' miracle, especially in terms of his communicative strategy with the people who were of less understanding. 
and also this implies that a kind of a mystery that Jesus was keeping all along instead of speaking it straight. But thank you, Mr. Daryl. Anyone else? What you can tell about your favorite parable or miracle? No one else? My understanding is regarding miracles. Yes, um, Sister Kamala. Maybe a person is with uh, fever or some sickness so, or event taking place that uh, to sort out that um, Jesus performed. Um, parable is uh, uh, where people were uneducated and uh, less aware of the things. Jesus tries a different method to uh, that one of the ways this um, parable to narrate the story methods so which people were able to it was easy for uh, people to understand this is what my opinion okay. good sister about miracle you said something you could be a little more elaborate on it uh, miracle i uh, what i understand is uh, maybe some particular event uh, what had uh, actually happened um may sometimes may not be able to explain in words the persons okay. who have experienced may um describe so that okay so you mean to say like the parable the miracles kind of a relative experience of an individual who experiences yes, it yes okay very good thank you sister kamala anyone else would like to present your first impression your question are your favorite miracle or parable? Yes, Mr. Daryl. Uh, you know, Father, I, I feel that miracles still do happen okay. in our lives. And I think that is what uh, Jesus, uh, you know, sometimes referred to as, I will be there with you till the end of time. And he keeps working his power in our lives. And I think miracles still do happen okay thank you mr darren so mr darren tells that miracles do happen even today good very good and that shows the continuous presence of jesus amidst us good. thank you rubala yes good evening brother according to, to me uh, according to me the parable is uh through the words what uh, jesus was saying no then um, miracle means the actions everyone okay. can understand. Very good. So you have summarized the parables as words and miracles as actions. Good, very good. So we can say like the kingdom of God as given in words and as shown in actions. Very good. So that's a way of a very good way of summarizing. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Arke? Uh, Father, I have a question for that. Yes, Mr. Jesus used parables. Is it only for explaining the uh, the kingdom of God or for some other purpose? Okay, good. Very good. Is it only for explanation about the kingdom of God or something else? Good. Thank you, Mr. Arke. Father, also, I feel, I feel uh, this miracle is mainly focused on faith. Very good. So based on faith, so faith is a kind of a prerequisite for a miracle. Good, very good. Thank you. Father, for me, uh, and, uh, to illustrate the kingdom of God, uh, he has okay. used the parables. And the miracles okay. are you, uh, he has uh, done a lot of miracles to increase the faith, to show very good. Uh, people. Yeah, that's what very I good. understand. So, on the one hand, miracle involves faith. And as Mr. Ravi Kumar says, on the other hand, miracle also increases other people's faith. So people looking at uh, miracles begin to believe in Jesus. So that way, kind of uh, faith is uh, implied and faith is invited. So they can say that they could. Thank you, Mr. Ravi Kumar. Very good. So we have in a comment box from Mary Padma, she tells, miracles, some miracles have names, some miracles are nameless and they are generic very good good thank you for presenting your questions your first impressions and your 
a description about parables and miracles. Good. So we will address them while we get into the topic proper. So the first 45 minutes I will dedicate on the parables and the second 45 minutes will dedicate for the miracles. I share my screen with you. I hope you are able to view my screen. Yes, yes it is visible. Good. Thank you. Parables and Miracles of Jesus. This is our online lecture, lesson 18. The outline of our lecture, as we have in the textbook, is as follows. One, basic introduction to the parables. Two, role of the parables in the mission of Jesus. Like a, what type of role or what type of relevance the parables had for the mission of Jesus in the immediate context. Third one, parables and the kingdom of God. So here, the expression kingdom of God we have in Mark and Luke, while Matthew has kingdom of heaven. But the concept is same. Matthew chooses to avoid the name of God and chooses to replace it with kingdom of heaven. And these primarily parables were aiming at giving what the kingdom of God meant. However, there were some parables like which talked other things other than kingdom of God. Like for example, the parable of the prodigal son, the parable is given in the context of Jesus encountering some people, the Pharisees and those who talk about justice in the world. So he in fact talks about mercy. So the context is different. But some parables are directly telling that this is about kingdom of God. Even the parable of the talents last Sunday we heard and previous Sunday we had the parable of the ten virgins. So these parables are directed towards the understanding of kingdom of heaven. So some parables are direct in terms of explanation about the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven. But some parables have their other scopes. Then number four, parables for just society. So how parables aimed for justice or a prophetic dimension of parables. We'll see number four. Number five, interpreting the parables today. Uh, how do we make sense of parables on the one hand? And number two, how we can use different parables to communicate the message of Jesus to today's people. Number six, background to the miracles. So that's already the second part of our study. Background to the miracles. Somebody has. Number six, background to the miracles. Number seven, role of miracles in the life and ministry of Jesus. Like how people believe in Jesus looking at the miracles. Then eight, we will we'll see some miracles and take them for our study. And finally, interpreting the miracles today. Like in the context of what Mr. Daryl said, how miracles could be understood today and how we experience different types of miracles even today and how that points out to Jesus' continuous presence amidst the world. Good. Having said that, the outline, we go to number one, basic introduction to the parables. First and foremost, parable is a figure of speech in a language. Figure of speech could be a kind of a, a language could be direct and indirect. Look at the example here. Samson is a lion in a battle. So here, Samson is a lion in a battle or in a war, it would mean Samson is a human person, but lion is an animal. So human person, an animal. So Samson's strength, instead of being told directly, it is given in a kind of a figurative speech or a metaphor using the strength of lion. So here, what is implied is everyone understands lion as a strong animal. Suppose in a particular culture, maybe in an African culture or an Asian culture, lion means meekness and people will misunderstand what Samson was about. So here, the speaker and the reader or the hearer should have the same semantic domain or they call it in a more formal language, concept mapping. So the concept mapping makes the entire parable possible. So here, Samson is a lion so Samson is a strong person like a lion. 
this is how we are able we understand from this particular sentence so parable also for example we have the kingdom of god is like a mustard seed so here the kingdom of god like a mustard seed so maybe mustard seed may be black or mustard seed may be small or little in size and what quality or what what characteristic feature is referred so that the hearer and the speaker must have the same in mind otherwise people will misunderstand so first primarily we shall understand it's a figure of speech secondly parable is a story or a fable like jataka tales of buddhism or aesop's fables we'll see later then god as rock are under eagle's wings, rejected lover, seed, leaven, coin. So these are all word pictures. Why we call them as word pictures? Word pictures are, as soon as you recite the word, your mind creates a picture. For example, coin. So the very moment I say a word, coin, my mind creates the image of a coin, or a seed, or a wing, or a rock. So these type of words are called word pictures, whereby the words come or create a pictorial representation in our minds. Often parables also create a pictorial rep representation. For example, when Jesus says, parable, the kingdom of heaven is like a sower. So immediately our mind tries to create a picture of a sower or it tries to recall as the event of sowing that we ourselves did or somebody else did. So that way, parable brings to our mind a kind of a word picture. Then there are visual metaphors, like with the expression of a picture, a message is conveyed. We'll see some pictures later. Today, people talk about infographic. What is an infographic? For example, we are used to infographic in many places, in airports or railway stations, or use of common facilities. So they people are of two types. They are literate and illiterate. So literate people can read and understand. And for those who are not able to read a particular language or a particular script, we have images being used as communicative elements. For example, the image of a dustbin. So people need not read that this is a dustbin. So just looking at the image, people can go and drag and go drop the, drop the waste. So here, what is the implication? So infographics are graphic, they convey an information in a pictorial form. So parables also kind of a pictorial forms whereby the image is communicated to the audience. Then last one, Semitic mind was very symbolic and picturesque. For example, we have Greek mind and Semitic mind, Hebrew mind. So the key difference would be the Greek mind was very literary. So it will go for all the propositions, syllogisms, so kind of a logical representation using words. But the Semitic mind, on the other hand, has its own worldview of communicating through pictures. So when it comes to our Asian mindset, be it Indian, Malaysian, Sri Lankan, so we are more Semitic than Greek because we also use a lot of symbols, a lot of uh, symbolic representations to convey our messages. So that way, Semitic mind is different from Greek mind. That is how people are able to use many. And that very well we can see in the New Testament itself. Look at the Gospels. So the Gospels were written by the Aramaic speakers or somewhere Greek speakers like Luke, but however, they were using the message of Jesus as it is. But coming to later, books like Acts of the Apostles or later epistles where the miracles of Jesus are not there. But when it comes to parables, parables of Jesus are not there. But however, Paul uses different metaphors like a metaphor of a building or a metaphor of a body as the temple of God. So these are different metaphors, but metaphors are there, parables are not there because mostly they are influenced by Greek literature or Greek mindset. So Semitic mind Tends to so Jesus has a Semitic mind whereby he uses a lot of parables to communicate, but later authors they are not very Semitic in terms of expression, that's why they just use metaphors, they don't use parables. So, this is a little introduction. We'll see some pictures to communicate whatever we have seen. So, look at the image here the image of a rock. So, God is my rock. So, as soon as we hear the word rock, our mind creates this picture. This rock means the stability. 
stability of the rock or the long lasting character of the rock which means god is stable that i can rely on him that could be one on the other hand this rock protects for example if i stand here and those who are behind the rock can't see me so that way the rock not only represents protection and the strength or the stability but also it represents protection so god is my rock means god is a strong person and god protects me from my enemies so this is how one image could convey multiple meanings depending on the context so this is one example for word picture then we have here uh, here an eagle from deuteronomy 32 there the lord tells as i was carrying you like a eagle carries its chick and here eagle what it's what it is according to the scientists who study birds they say like how eagle teaches its uh, little ones to fly eagle pushes eagle takes the little ones there are usually they catch there on the top of a pillar or a pinnacle of a hill and there from there it pushes the little one down and the little one is now pushed down and begins to open its wings and fly and as it flies when it finds it difficult the mother eagle immediately comes down and carries on the on its wings so this is on eagle's wings so this is the word picture here what is emphasized is like god pushed the people of israel from egypt towards the promised land but they found it difficult on the way to walk on the way to feed on the way to drink water so like a mother eagle god always carried them provided for them so this is a kind of metaphor it's being used in that book of deuteronomy 32 whereby it expresses god's providential care to the people of israel so this is another word picture another metaphor then we have a parable parable of the lost coin so a woman loses the coin and searches for it and finds it so this picture is a representation of the parable then we have an Aesop's fable whereby here we have a scorpion frog they are good friends and scorpion wants to get to the other side of the river and the frog wants to carry it but however it's afraid that it may sting and at one moment it stings and when frog asks why did you do it frog this scorpion tells like it is my nature excuse so me Aesop, of, yes screen missing brother screen is, screen is not sharing yeah okay i'll just Are able to see? Yes, brother. Good. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for pointing out, pointing it out. Good. Very good. So this particular parable, parable tells you about at a given point of time, every human person reveals his or her real character. So here, the scorpion, however, uh, frog was friendly to scorpion, or however, it was trying to help him go across the river at one moment it shows its own true nature so Esau wants to convey through this uh, through this fable that people at a given time work what they are supposed to work or uh, they show their real colors and it is not always good to pedestalize people like to carry them like so that they, they will be always often we pedestalize people but people in a way they hurt us in a given point so through a fable, he wants to communicate a message. And we have a visual metaphor here. What does it symbolize? What is the meaning? What do you see on the screen? Light. Very good. Light, the next one. It's full. Okay, what it's filled with? So it's light beer. Light beer. Okay, to express the beer is light, it's not strong. They put it this light beer. It's a visual metaphor. 
this visual metaphor what's it communicate an ice cream melting global warming very good so global warming so it's a visual metaphor for global warming so it's like an ice ice cube a scooped ice cream however the world map is the global warming very good this visual metaphor smoking kills very good smoking kills thank you here it is a freedom of speech so no freedom of speech but it's like a cage microphone becomes like a cage so here these are some infographics for example you have a cart so you go to any online website where we make our purchases so there cart so cart symbolizes symbolizes purchase or in a supermarket then library platform delete so these are infographics so even though i don't know to read and write these letters still with these pictures i'll be able to understand what is meant by these symbols so this is the use of infographic that we have today and look at the picture here we have here in classical hebrew yale so it is yale yale is name for god but originally hebrew was pictorial letters so here we have alef alef in fact is a bull's head then we have a symbol so this is a symbol of a kind of a rod or kind of a, a stick so here symbol of a leadership so here strong leader so yel literally means god is a strong leader look at the next word here av alef and bet Av means father. From here only we have Aramaic Abba, Abba father, our father. So they pray Abba. And how this picture or how these letters are originally written is we have a bull's head and bed. So here it's like a strand. Bull's head is a strand represents strand, and bed or bed is house. So he is the strength of the house. Who is the strength of the house? Father. So in Hebrew, every word has an image. Like uh, we have God's faithfulness, God's mercy. So everything is represented by an image. So that way, Hebrew is an imagery or a pictorial language, and every word could be symbolized through these images. So which means all letters or all words have their pictorial meaning, whereby a greater meaning is conveyed through these letters so these are little background informations to understand a parable so number 1 we said parable simply means a figurative speech or a metaphor or a word picture or a visual metaphor or a infographic so in our modern terms we were trying to make sense of what a parable is that's number 1 point to number 2 what is a parable in greek parabole means to throw near or to throw along that is an etym etymological meaning in hebrew its equivalent is mashal riddle saying story or a taunt by which some extraordinary message is communicated through an ordinary medium of language and parables in the old testament we have about 11 parables for example we have the parable of the lamb which prophet nathan came and told in front of king david after he committed his sin with bathsheba so that is also parable in second samuel 12 1 to 14 in the new testament we have about 55 parables of which seven kingdom parables so we'll see how these parables make sense to us in the long run so that's number one parables the terminology and what are the types of parables or kinds of parable they are of three types number 1 they are being introduced with us are like like taken from daily realities the kingdom of god is like a net or the kingdom of god is like a mustard seed or the kingdom of god is like a like yeast so here like whenever there is a this particular particle a is added there it means the it is a simile so simile is like an explicit representation of a metaphor through the words such as as and like so the first group of parables are introduced with as or like the second group 
is narrative parable or parabolic story where actions are involved. For example, parable of father and two sons that we have in Luke 15, the parable of the lost son, where there is a narrative or a story or the story acts as a parable, parabolic story. And the third one, simple saying, but without us or like, like a city that is built on a hill cannot be hid. Or when Jesus says, you are the salt of the earth, you are the light of the world. So here, yes, salt and light, they are also parables, but they are used without as or like. So they are like metaphors directly. When they are used with as or like, we call them as similes. So another example that we have is city that is built on a hill cannot be hid. Good. That's number C. We go to the next one. Other figures of speech. Metaphor. Enter through the narrow door. So here, Jesus gives a kind of a metaphor. So they enter through the narrow door. It does not mean like we have to go to a particular place and look for the door. But narrow door signifies anything that is painful or anything that is not easy. Then Jesus himself uses simple similes. I am sending you out like sheep among wolves. So here, the use of like means simile. Then illustrate the story. After telling the parable of the Good Samaritan, Jesus tells, go and do likewise. So here, an, in, an kind of imperative is there. That imperative is communicated through an illustrative story. Then there is an allegory, like a rocky ground in Mark 4, 10, 20, and Mark, it's supposed to be Mark 7, uh, sorry, Mark 4, Matthew 7, where a person who listens to all the teachings are persons who build their houses on a rocky ground, on a solid foundation. So it's like an allegory of, like allegory also is a kind of a metaphor, whereby the meaning is more elaborate than in a metaphor. Good. Now we go to number five. How many parables? No precise number, because some scholars say only kingdom parables as parables. Some say even little words like the narrow door, they treat that also as a parable. So there is no precise number. Parables found in all the synoptic gospels, they are three, like for example, the sower. The parable of the sower is found in all the synoptic gospels. However, there are little differences. For example, Luke presents like only one type of good, that is good seedlet, hundredfold. But other, Matthew and Mark, they have 60-fold and 30-fold. For, for Luke, only hundredfold. So even though it is present in all the gospels, each gospel writer has his own way of presenting it. The comment to Matthew and Luke 9, found only in Mark 2, found only in Matthew 9, found only in Luke 19. So Luke is very, Luke is a literary artist. He uses his own parables. For example, the famous parable of a good Samaritan and the parable of the prodigal son. So they are very unique to Luke. Parables found only in John, they are five. And some parables are given an allegorical interpretation, like parable of Good Samaritan. Saint Augustine interprets as a like a wounded person is a fallen person in the world, and Jesus comes there, gets down, and Jesus pours oil, and oil that represents Jesus' humanity and divinity. So that's how Augustine beautifully writes about the parable of the Good Samaritan. So even in the fathers of the lit church literature. We have parables being interpreted in an allegorical way. That is number the first one. We have just explained the literary background to the parables. And the role of parables in Jesus' teaching. Why Jesus used parables? Number one, parables clarify the teaching. Like Jesus is a teacher. However, with the parables, the teaching becomes more effective. Like parable about the Trust in the providence of God. So Jesus tells so many things about the providence of God. However, with a little parable about consider the lilies of the field, and thereby he is able to express trust in the providence of God. And moral instruction, like in the case of Nathan's story. So Nathan could have very well told David that what you have done is wrong, what you have committed is adultery, and what you have committed is evil in the sight of the Lord. So instead of telling it direct, he clarifies the teaching through the parable, the parable of the lamb, whereby 
the gravity of the matter comes to the forefront. And the parable of the wicked tenants. So here as well, instead of telling the Pharisees that you are responsible for killing Jesus, so Jesus himself puts a parable in such a way that people will understand. Those who understand the parable will know there are enemies to the kingdom of heaven. So that, that way, parables clarify the teaching. And there were two kinds of audience for Jesus. The 12 apostles or the disciples in some gospels, but they are a group called apostles and the simple common folk. So Jesus uses different strategies for different people. Like he tells, like to the ordinary people, it is not given. So to you, it is given. So he explains to them in private and he explains to people in parables. So mission manifesto of Jesus, we have in three places, Mark, Matthew, they just announced Jesus as proclaiming the repentance for the kingdom. But in Luke, it is different. Jesus comes to his own hometown and he proclaims the words of Isaiah. So their mission manifesto is presented in a different way because that will give the thrust to Jesus' ministry that comes afterwards. We go to the third one, parables and the kingdom of God. So the kingdom of God has life within. So of the 45 parables, 15 begin with the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God is like. So here it's a comparison whereby Jesus compares with one thing and he tries to give the meaning of the kingdom where he tells the kingdom has to be understood with this little element. So the kingdom of heaven is elaborate. So people can't really know what the kingdom of God is. So they want, he wants to communicate its own meaning through this. For example, we take the kingdom of God is like a mustard seed. So the mustard seed is very small, but very big when it makes an impact later when it grows to a tree. So the implication is the kingdom of God has a small beginning, but the impact that it creates on great or the parable through an east, parable of the east. So there what Jesus tells, it is invisible. So we can't find how east is performing, it's invisible. So in the same way, the kingdom of God, heaven is invisible to the eyes. However, its role is irreversible. So it will continue to work like east works in the dough. So this is how one element of a particular object is taken and that is compared with the kingdom of God or kingdom of heaven. And there are some qualities to inherit the kingdom, like compassion, forgiveness, goodness, generosity. So one way it tells about the identity of the kingdom of God or kingdom of heaven. And the second one, different qualities to inherit the kingdom, like Samaritan is proposed as a model, unforgiving servant is proposed as a non-model, and vineyard workers. So through these different people, the qualities of the kingdom are put forth. Then there are certain demands to inherit the kingdom, like parable of the treasure. So there, you have to buy the entire field, which means you have to possess the kingdom of God in entirety. Or the parable of the pearl, you have to prioritize and take it. And parable of the tower builder and warrior king, you should be a planner and warrior king. You should know when to retreat. Or a friend in midnight, you should be perseverant and watchful servants. You must be vigilant. So there are different qualities and different demands that are present to the audience for entering into the kingdom of heaven. Then there are certain crisis parables. Crisis parables in the sense like uh, some people in the parable are put in a negative light. For example, parable of the talents, the first two persons or servants are appreciated for their multiplication of talents. But the third one is cursed, or third one is punished, because here this person has not used the talent. So here the audience has to analyze like what type of a person he or she is. The same way the parable of the ten virgins. So the five were foolish and the five were wise. So the, here the reader has to understand which one he or she is. So that how the parables put for, put forward a crisis and the reader has to understand and derive the meaning of the kingdom. Then kingdom here and after. Some parables tell about the kingdom of God later. The parable of the rich man and Lazarus 
some people say like what would happen after our life so that way it acts as the life after death so those elements are also brought forth through the parables of the kingdom mm -hmm. so they are parables of the kingdom and parables for the just society like we all need a just a society our society that is built on justice look at the last words word line here subalterns like women children gentiles so parallelly there were in jesus time pharisees sadducees scribes and priests but in the subaltern area like people of a lower category are people who were left out marginalized so the parables aim at elevating these people for example in the parable of the lost son or the prodigal son so the particular young boy so he is young so that way he is a minor or a small person in the family because usually the elder ones will get the property but here younger one and the younger one becomes a sinner so how a sinner could be accepted in the society so that way parables kind of a create a world view whereby just society is possible our parables challenge the world view of that time and they try to assert the identity of the subaltern people they were women children sinners gentiles so that way parables work for an ideal society a just society or a society with freedom and fraternity i look at chapter 15 of luke discrimination based on profession and tax collectors and sinners purity versus impurity so here by accepting this young one the father makes the audience or through this particular father jesus conveys to the audience that in the kingdom of god or in the father's eyes all are equal whether you become a sinner or you squander your my father's money still you could be accepted so that type of equality is proposed through the parables and here look at the parable of the good samaritan the wounded person is here the priest and the levite and jesus challenges their times by saying priest levite israelite instead of saying israelite he changes to samaritan so that would have create a lot of uh, chaos to their understanding because they would just expect an israelite but this challenges their understanding and by placing good samaritan jesus makes the equality of the society possible because the samaritans were kind of impure people and the samaritan is used to now teach about love of neighbor so that way parables in a way effect just society in jesus time parable of the vineyard workers we know the story from the morning till the evening different people work but all are given same don denarius so the last will be first and the first will be last this was an early christian problem because those who came to christianity earlier they thought they had more authority but those who came late they were treated less so now mark sorry matthew wants to communicate to his audience that in a community where everyone is baptized all have equal rights so thereby all have equal wages so in a way it proposes equality in the community community of believers so this is how not only they bring forth equality in the society but the equality in the christian community this is what is aimed at by the parables then we take interpretation of the parables and we stop here how interpretation was done earlier the church fathers irenaeus origen tertullian agustin they were into allegorical interpretation allegorical interpretation in the sense mostly they will take a particular parable and they will give a christ reading or christological reading whereby each person will represent christ or christ salvific events as i said earlier the good samaritan the entire salvation history is put forward through good samaritan this is how saint augustine illustrates this parable so they were mostly allegorical like they will take allegoria means like one for another so one is replaced by another meaning and it is read bible interpreting the bible or this is another way of interpreting the parable but now how do we interpret the parables historical critical interpretation it tries to give a meaning for example what is the meaning of talent or what is the meaning of mina or why mina is used in luke 
or why talent is used in Matthew. So they want to bring forth the history behind or the historical context or the original context of the people or the readers. The second one, narrative analysis. By narrative analysis, we mean how parable develops a story. In a narrative, there will be a, a situation whereby the entire thing will change. For example, in the parable of the workers, the transition happens when the landowner calls the steward and tells, call those who came last first and begin to give the salary. Or in the parable of the prodigal son, so the turning point happens when there is a monologue in that young boy's mind. So this is a transition point. So that's how. So here authors look at the story and go to the transition point or the climax of, climax of the action and they try to find the answer for the rest of the problem in the parable. Then some say socio-psychological interpretation. For example, the young man, the young boy came back, the young son, younger son came back home not because of any repentance, but because of his own selfish motive of hunger, because he compares himself with the servants at father's home, and he feels that all will be fed at father's home, but I am not fed here. So they understand the psychology in that particular character, or the person who is murmuring after receiving one denarius. So they understand the psychology. Why this person is murmuring? Because he is comparing. So psychology or psychological emotions that are present in the parable also being studied today. Ah, the parable of the lost coin. So the woman searches for the lost coin and finally rejoices. So rejoicing. So again, element of celebration, psychosocial interpretation. So this is how today psychologists look at the parables. Then there is a subaltern interpretation whereby subalterns, like the people who are oppressed, marginalized, they try to see in a parable the liberative elements. So that reading also is being encouraged today. Good. I pause here. We have just learned the parables. To begin with, the first one, introduction to the word parable. And we had some metaphors, word pictures, figures, figurative of speech, and visual metaphors, infographic. Then we went on to see how many parables are there and how parables talk about the kingdom of heaven and how parables are interpreted earlier and how they are interpreted today. And let us keep in mind, like parables convey to us more than what they imply directly, which means, so the meaning is deeper and it takes our understanding to go to the parable and understand the mysteries of the kingdom. And Jesus primarily uses the parables to communicate to the mystery of the kingdom but why he has to do that? We will do it. We'll take this when it comes to the significance of the parables in the end. Good. We take five minutes break now. This is 4.48. We rejoin at 4.53. You could stay back or you could rejoin. And meanwhile, keep your questions ready for our discussion at the end of the class. Thank you. Father. Yes, sister. Father, what is the topic we are sorry today, Father? I came late, so I didn't know. One second, sister. Could you please uh, let me know what topic we study today, Father? Okay, parables and miracles of Jesus. Father, is it, lesson the, 18. Is it connect with the lesson last um, month or the new Father? Yes, sister. Last month we saw passion narratives of Jesus. Like yes. after we have concluded the Gospels, so oh. now we are only taking the parables and miracles of Jesus, yeah. which Thank are present in the Gospels. Yes, sister. Okay. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Tui. Good. Any other doubt? Or anything you'd like to add to our learning? Good. Father, I have a small doubt. In the yes, classes will be con yeah, classes will be continued on every Friday or only for this uh, this week or this no, month. This is on the last Sunday of every month, Mr. Ravi Kumar. Every so Sunday only, no? On the sun last Sunday of every month. 
Only okay. this month we have to anticipate because Very of fine. our public program. Oh, oh, okay, okay. Done, done. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Good. And for those who are present as a students, they have their assessment also. So they have either postal course or online. So the assessment questions are there in the booklet. So you are welcome to present your assessment sheet. And for those who would like to continue this as a diploma, like if you want, if you are just an auditory student here, you want to make it, so you are welcome. You could just write a message to our CCBI Bible at gmail.com and we could give you the books and the learning materials. Okay, good. Hello, this is Rickson here from uh, Mumbai, Vasai. Basically, uh, this is my first day actually. And uh, I've received, yeah, I've received today only all the no notes books. Ah, so okay, I just want to So, uh, this is my first day, and I think so. I have already missed uh, some, uh, half an hour of time. I just joined late in the team. Okay, so uh, as uh, this is this will be every uh, Friday, or as you mentioned, once in a month, uh, fourth. Sunday? About yeah, it. once in a month, Riggs, last Sunday of every month. So this last Sunday okay. of this month is uh, Christ the King feast. So just we have anticipated. Okay, okay. okay. Got it. Got okay. it. Usually on the last Sunday. Okay. And now and, uh, your, your, your course is new. So now the lesson is 18th lesson. So now you may have a confusion like whether to start from lesson one or lesson 18. Okay. So you could start from lesson one. Because the curriculum is uh, designed that way, so it's a self-learning program. So you can read lesson one, you begin to answer the questions that are there. And this contact class, online contact class is a kind of support. And if you want to retrieve our previous lessons, for example, lesson one, you could go to our YouTube channel, that is St. Paul Bible College. There you will see all our previously recorded videos. So you could follow lessons from there. Uh, you can follow from lesson 18 and you go on okay okay Thanks. mr rickson um, good thank you yeah, yeah. thank you for yeah thank you okay could somehow like two like they follow from lecture and they still follow the the original book art as such so mr daryl follows that so he, he's into learning here then also he has his own self-learning good so it's open to our own way up to it good. very good so thank you for clarifying these methodological questions good having said that we get into the second part of our study this evening that is miracles of jesus i share my screen with you as we saw the background to the parables we will see now background to the miracles good the introduction miracles should be take them literally taken literally so today many people talk about miracles or miracles in a charismatic prayer or miracles in a personal life for example a miracle of a drug addicted person recovering or a miracle of visiting a person that person brings a lot of uh, good things to a family or a family is in a great crisis and one day they go for a prayer and some kind of revelation is there and every problem, every problem is problem is settled or some people are at the point of death and the doctors almost say this case is impossible to recover and suddenly through prayer or through a kind of revelation the healing takes place so as mr daryl ribeiro mentioned in the beginning Miracles even happen today. But how do we take the miracles? So miracle has always two sides. So for, for example, sorry, the first one is an insider view. Like for example, if I have experienced a miracle in my life, the view of the miracle is from me. That is an insider's view. And miracle from outsider's view. So often an outsider looks at a miracle with a suspicion or with a kind of prejudice or with a kind of fear so fear prejudice suspicion so they often hinder us from understanding a miracle so how do we understand the miracles worked out by 
Jesus. So this is our question for the second half of our study. And secondly, yesterday's miracles are today's ordinary events. For example, persons flying. Some hundred years before, it was a miracle. Like people never imagined that people could fly. So people could invent aircrafts or supersonic flights. But now we make them as ordinary day-to-day -day events. So yesterday's miracles could become today's ordinary events. That's again another life experience. Third one, what are the characteristics of a miracle? Number one, it should be an extraordinary event. Number two, natural science is unable to explain it. So this is the uh, these are the two characteristics of a miracle. For example, you go to Lourdes today, even though many people say like they have some miracles, uh, they received some miracles. However, the doctors are the scientists. They are always there to make sense of that. So a miracle should be an extraordinary event and natural science should not be able to explain it. And next to my point is, some say it is a magic or some say it is psychic. So psychic, for example, it happens in one's own mind or it's a magical event or even or kind of a eventuated by magic. So these experiences are also possible. Some interpret as magic events or psychic. But look at creation event or exodus event. So exodus event is a miracle because people cross the Red Sea and the Red Sea stands or the water stands still both sides and people walk in the, the dry land. So this is a miracle. So here the author tries to explain that. But to us still it is it's a miracle for us and we are not able to understand it. So this is extraordinary and it is not explained by natural science because how can water split or how can dry land appear in a sea? So they, are, they go against science and that's why we call this as miraculous events or miraculous happenings. So miracles, just to remember these two characteristics. It should be an extraordinary event and natural science is unable to explain it. In the Old Testament, supernatural sign, divine wonder, signs and wonders that the Lord has done. So these three expressions are used to express miracle. For example, the 10 plagues in Egypt, they were supernatural signs to say to the Egyptians that God of Israel is fighting on behalf of the people of Israel. So there are signs or wonders, or we can say some places we call signs and wonders together. In the New Testament, Three words are being used. Sign, mighty work, powerful deed. So sign primarily, it points to something else. So where is a sign board? It means the sign tells that something else is there. So there way, therefore, miracles are signs. They tell us that kingdom of God is already present. So they are signs of that are signs to the kingdom of God. They are pointers to the kingdom of heaven. Secondly, they are mighty works. Mighty works, it refers to Jesus' might. And third one, they are deeds. The kingdom of God being represented, represented as actions. So these three expressions are used in the New Testament to refer to miracles. Then they are beyond cause and effect or action and reaction. For example, every action has a reaction, we say. Or every effect has a cause. But these miracles they go beyond cause and effect. For example, a parable of the miracle of the paralyzed person being healed. So the cause and effect. So the cause and effect is the person who is afflicted with paralysis or who is afflicted with leprosy has to suffer. So that is the cause, is the disease, and suffering is the effect. But now suddenly the effect is being removed or the suffering is removed from the person and the person is healed. So there how it goes beyond the cause and the effect. So the cause of leprosy, or sorry, cause of leprosy causes suffering, but suffering is alleviated or removed and thereby the person experiences miracle. Thus miracles go beyond cause and effect chain. Then in biblical cosmology, like here we need to understand, like worldview of biblical times, they had heavens, earth, underworld. And miracles are happening here on the earth, but the power is from heaven. So this is how we need to understand. 
miracles are worked not by human persons but by god because whatever happens on the earth they are controlled by what happens in the heavens that is it's god and there is underworld which we can't really make sense of so that type of mystery is there in the biblical world view or biblical cosmology so miracles work at the level of earth and they are worked by heavens so this is the biblical cosmological background that we need to have for our miracles as far as the religious background is concerned hellenistic or greek mythology also has different presentation of miracles like nature miracles healing miracle so jesus miracle also nature miracle for example jesus calms the sea that is a nature miracle or healing miracle jesus heals peter's mother in law's fever that is a healing miracle so in greek mythology also we have these type of miracles and in rabbinic literature we have pharisees also worked miracles in the old testament miracles were representing messianic times so when messiah comes he would work miracles and that way jesus comes as a messiah who would work wonders or who would work miracles and understanding of miracles in church history how people all along our interpretation they understood early church and middle ages they had apologetic understanding apologetic understanding means to defend christ faith or christian faith or to defend christ as the redeemer or savior so they would always say like these miracles really were worked by jesus that is number one number two some people said the miracles are exaggerations for example the parting of the red sea they gave a natural interpretation for example they said during a certain period of time the waters in the red sea would recede and the dry land will appear so people walked in the dry land during that season or they would say in a particular period of time because of the sunlight reflection the waters in the nile they look as if it looks like blood so there was no blood really in the waters of the nile so it was only a natural thing that happened so some scientists or some scholars even they try to say the miracles are to be interpreted natural or natural events and in the modern times we often try to be very secular so demythologize demythologize means you remove the mythical dimension so any religion will have three elements the first one is mythical elements the second one is theological element and the third one is ritual element so here kind of a mythical element the this particular field the modern secular understanding tries to remove mythical element from the religion so they attribute all the miracles belong to the mythical character of the religion and the last one miracles happen to those who believe in them so if you have to experience a miracle you have to believe it that's a understanding that is that comes from celtic understanding where they say belief or faith is a prerequisite for realizing any miracle good so we go to the miracles in the life of jesus number one historicity of the miracles so varied details of the miracles in the synoptic gospels for example one miracle is described in one way for example the miracle the miracle of healing of the blind men so here the blind men being healed is given in all the synoptic gospels but matthew tells two blind men but other gospel writers tell one blind man so we are not sure whether two or one so there is a variety of presentation and that creates confusion in understanding the historicity whether really this particular miracle happened secondly stories so there could have been one miracle story for example jesus has command over the storm so that is one but that particular story could have different manifestations like some would say like jesus was in the boat and some people see from there he calmed the sea or some the another story develops like where jesus was walking on the waters and there the storm was there and peter was afraid of the storm and jesus heals him so again it's a calming of the storm indirectly so one story but many multiple or uh, like a multiplication of the original story some people say this is another so that they say all the miracles are not historical events maybe one or two things might have happened 
but later authors could have multiplied the stories. Third one, exaggerating the miraculous character of the story. So some character, some miracles were exaggerating. For example, at the point of death, so the centurion comes to Jesus and tells that my servant is at the point of death. So this particular expression, what does it imply? It exaggerates the fact that the person was almost dead and Jesus gave life to the person, which means Jesus is more powerful or Jesus' power is exaggerated here. Then create new miracles based on one, like on the sea, by the sea. So we have here, Jesus works a miracle of walking on the sea. Then he comes there and he brings, they bring the, in the John and gospel, then Jesus tells like a, cast the net on the other side and they bring a lot of catch of fish. So one miracle, but two kinds, two sides we can say. One is on the sea, then another one is by the sea, the bringing of fish. Then popular miracle stories to Jesus. Like uh, in the First Testament, Old Testament, Elijah. Elijah resuscitates widow's son. So now Jesus is a great prophet. And Elisha also works a similar story. So Elijah, Elisha, Jesus. So all are great prophets. So to keep Jesus in the prophetic line, the evangelists are the authors create miracles. So this is another interpretation of the miracles. So this, this, uh, in, these insights in a way question the historicity of the miracles. Now we go to the miracle stories proper in the Gospels. There are about 30 miracles of Jesus. Some are healing miracles. For example, healing of a leprosy afflicted person, healing miracle, healing of Peter's mother-in-law, healing miracle, or healing of a blind man, healing miracle. Exorcism means casting out of the demons. So maybe demon possessed a person in the synagogue or Canaanite woman, Syrophoenician woman's daughter, demon possessed. So all these stories come under exorcisms. Third one, resuscitation. Resuscitation is giving life to a dead person. For example, resuscitation of a Cain widow's son. So there, resuscitation is different from resurrection. For resurrection, once for all, life is there. So Jesus' resurrection, we say, because after Jesus' death, he is risen, he is risen, and there is no more death for him. But resuscitation means these people who come back to life will again die at some part of life. For example, Jairus' daughter, Jesus gives life. So the daughter will grow up and later will die as an elderly person or nine widow's son. So these are all resuscitation stories whereby the persons who are given life will die later. Lazarus other in Bethany. It's a resuscitation story because Lazarus will die later. And there's fourth type, sorry, third type. Fourth type is nature miracle where either Jesus walks on the waters or Jesus calms the sea. So they are called nat nature miracles or natural miracles. So four types of miracles, healing, exorcism, resuscitation and nature are natural elements good characteristics of miracle story like how do we understand the miracle stories in the light of the gospels number one they were truly historical because many authors have attested so multiple attestation means like all have witnessed it therefore it's historical secondly they were reasonable in the sense they are not exaggerated stories but they really made sense to common audience. They were useful, useful because the miracles conveyed to the audience that Jesus is the Messiah. Then they were worked openly. So it was not like a, a mythical or a magical thing that would happen in a closed door, but opened in front of all the people. For example, multiplication of loaves. It's a kind of miracle that was worked out in front of 5,000 people. So Jesus worked out the miracles openly. And they were worked effortlessly. Like Jesus just tells things happen. He just rebukes the storm and the storm, the sea becomes quiet. So effortlessly they happen. They were worked spontaneously and instantly. Like there was no kind of a uh, agenda or a schedule place. There. Okay, this one, this one will follow. No, just spontaneously things happen. And they were worked under different circumstances, which means they were not given in or in the following the same pattern. So all are worked in different circumstances means like all have their own background. So that way all are historical. This is how we today establish the historicity of the 
miracles and to continue their work on the basis of faith so the person who has to experience miracle must have faith and they were free that's two years they were given freely and nothing was charged then they were free from retaliation like they were all positive except for cursing up a tree and they were eschatological means they were pointing up to a later time in the end of times the kingdom of heaven and its arrival so these are the characteristics of miracle stories the miracles are signs of the kingdom so they are signs of the presence of the kingdom here and now so jesus was asked the question by the pharisees when will the kingdom of heaven come so jesus tells the kingdom of god is already working amidst you so what is the implication it means that already amidst you means that is being present amidst them through the person of jesus through uh, jesus's parables and miracles that way jesus's presence itself shows that kingdom is there and at also miracles tell that god works in human history because these miracle happen miracles happen to people who were living in human history so these people were the beneficiaries of the kingdom and there is a gift of salvation at the present time so the person experiences salvation or happiness or fulfillment at the given moment so that person need not wait for the next world so that happens here and now in the miracle story the miracles as acts of liberation for example jesus cures a demon possessed person woman in the synagogue and jesus calls her as daughter of abraham so the person is now liberated from slavery and becomes a daughter of abraham who was considered as a evil possessed demon possessed person and same with the man in the synagogue the dead lazarus a liberation of the poor is always underlined in any miracle story and the people who received the miracles of jesus except for a few few all were poor people and in fact by healing them or for example the healing of the 10 leprosy afflicted persons jesus restores them to the society so that is a kind of liberation so liberation to the people who were afflicted with leprosy that involved social alienation physical alienation and also kind of spiritual alienation so these people enjoyed jesus's liberative act in their own lives good we'll see some miracles and we'll have a study look at the par- sorry miracle here exorcism one example from the jerusalem demoniac so we know the story according to the story jesus is there in a gentile town where a demon possessed person and jesus heals the person the demon enters into the swine herd and the swine herd jump to the waters and they die and the persons of the village they come and say to jesus you leave our village so this is the story and the demonic in the synagogue so these stories are exorcism stories so here in this particular story jesus heals this person and this particular person the story is very beautifully narrated in the gospel of mark and mark mark is a good cos good storyteller so far stories of miracles mark is an ideal author so he tells this person was kind of a terror kind of person who evoked terror but people were not afraid when he was demon possessed but according to the story when this person is now healed and he is sitting at the feet of the lord and there they are afraid so that is the story of the people like when people are demon possessed we don't care we label them as demon possessed but when they are all right they create a kind of fear in the people so this is a beautiful story to read from mark 5 to 20 then the resuscitation stories five stories in the new testament where jairus daughter is given life again nine widow son lazarus tabitha and eticus in the acts of the apostles then three stories in the old testament so in a way god's keys to motherhood reign and life in the old testament like here the resuscitation story tells that jesus is the author of life so jesus can give life so this is the meaning of the resuscitation stories 
then healing story healing of the paralytic so here jesus exercises his healing power over sins because whenever the paralytic person was killed was healed so jesus tells your sins are forgiven and immediately those who are around him ask who is he that forgives sins so the author tries to say that jesus not only healed the disease but he healed the root of the disease that is sin so that is the implication of the healing stories especially the healing of the paralytic the nature miracles we have two examples jesus walking on the sea and multiplication of loaves as we said earlier then how do we interpret the miracle today number 1 destruction of satan's rule or power of death so god has power over satan or god has power over death number 2 liberation of the poor so the poor people can afford to go to hospital or god works a miracle so that way the poor people are liberated as far as the biblical understanding is concerned but even though today the miracles are open to everyone some miracles happen to everyone irrespective of one's economic background gender background or political background or our background some miracles can be experienced by any person thirdly miracles tell us that our god is a compassionate god merciful god and miracles reveal about god and what is implied is we make an obedience of faith so thereby on the one hand faith is necessary for miracles on the other hand after seeing the miracle one has to have obedience of faith or one has to believe so that way faith has two workings one at the beginning of the miracle and another at the end of the miracle and some parables could be understood as miracles for example the return of the prodigal son so it's really a miracle and this person comes again so some types of parables could be considered as miracles and some miracles could be considered as parables like restoration of sight to bartimaeus so look at the parable here the miracle here so jesus is about to enter into jerusalem so jerusalem is here now he heals a blind person this blind person professes jesus son of david but the people who are there who are able to see jesus they are not able to see in jesus son of david but the blind person was able to see so the implication is the blind person here is a parable parable to explain about the blindness of jesus disciples so that way some miracles could act as parables so on one hand parables as miracles on the other hand miracles as parables but that concludes our lesson we got assessment then we will pass number 1 for those who attend the course who attend the course as a part of their diploma number 1 how many parables are there in the old testament there are 11 which is the parable about the pharisees delivered directly to them the parable of the wicked tenants three the parables in luke 15 speak about forgiveness mercy goodness and generosity of god number 4 the parable of the persistent friend it talks about constant and strong faith to enable god to concede the request of the faithful number 5 the parable of the 10 maidens in matthew 21 to 25 to 13 in season preparedness versus unpreparedness then 6 the church fathers interpreted the parables as allegory then name the prophets working miracles in the old testament elijah and elisha eight miracles in the gospel are signs of the kingdom number 9 which evangelist adds elements to invoke sympathy in miracle stories luke how do we call the incident of widow son at nine it is resuscitation it is not resurrection but it is resuscitation then paragraph questions which are your favorite parables number 1 number 2 write the essential qualities to inherit the kingdom number 3 how do the parables explain the kingdom here and the kingdom hereafter number 4 what are the characteristics of the miracles of jesus number 5 how do the miracles present the acts of liberation number 6 explain the miracles of resuscitation in the new testament so they are 
assessment questions which you find at the end of your lessons. Good. Thank you for your attention. And that concludes my presentation. I stop here. If you have any question, you could ask. What are uh, the questions which are there at the end of the lessons uh, which you mentioned, which uh, we need to study and then we need to write that uh, on the any we need to prepare any book or any uh, normal sh a spreadsheet is okay uh, basically. Which yeah, yes. can, uh, Okay, thank you, Mr. Rickson, for the question. Like, you could write your answer like a manual handwritten assignment, or you could type it out and send by email, or you can write and take a photo and send, or you could send by postal postal service. So it's, uh, it's open to you. Okay. 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 So form, email is okay. But you could send okay. to WhatsApp. Okay, good. No, no, email is okay, right? So uh, that's okay. that's what will work. Okay, Winward, we can write on right Winward and then we can do that. Sure, sure, Mr. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for joining the course and all the best for you. Good. Anyone else? Anyone else would like to clarify anything? On the lesson or on the procedure? Father? Yes, yes, Mr. Lark. Okay. In, the, in the New Testament, Father, in the Acts Apostles, we see that even Peter and Paul were performing miracles. But now in the church, we don't see such things. Is it because of lack of faith or what? Okay. Good question, Mr. Lark. Like, why miracles don't happen today? Or uh, like a, one way, like we can say, the miracles as recorded in the Bible, that type of miracles, like the revelation, is now closed. So no more we record. For example, any miracle that happens anywhere in a Marian shrine, or that is not being recorded because, as far as the Bible is concerned, it is closed. So miracles don't seem to appear. But besides, in every place, even every home, hospital, people do experience miracles. But uh, as you mentioned, and as even Jesus asked a question, like when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? He proposes a put, put forward a question. So that way, sometimes the faith also is lacking. So today we tend to uh, kind of demythologize everything. So that takes us away from the miracles. Thank you, Mr. R.K. Thank you, Father. Pauline Rose. You wanted to ask something? Uh, this is the first time uh, I'm attending this. Uh, so uh, thank you in the first place uh, for the wonderful uh, presentation. I just wanted to have a clarity on this course, Father. Uh, so yes, this, this one year course, maybe you can, if you can give a just very short brief. So, you know, uh, and uh, would there be an exam that we have to take or? Okay, good. Thank you, Madam Father. This is a two year program, okay, 24 lessons, one lesson, one month. So, 24 lessons, 24 months, two years. And there are 24 lessons, are 24 booklets. And if you are making it online, there are 24 lessons, 24 modules that we have on your website. So, at the end of each lesson, you will have an assessment sheet which you are asked to uh, write the answers and submit. And at the end of 24th lesson, you will get the certificate. So the program is designed in such a way, like even one could begin and finish in one month. So like it's not like based on time we issue certificates, but based on the completion. So if one person is able to finish it fast, the person is welcome to do it. Thank you, Father. But, um, this course covers, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, is it on the okay. Bible or? So the contact lesson or the contact seminar, we call it like an online lecture. We have on the last Sunday of every month from 4 to 5.30. But only today or even earlier, we had anticipated some lectures. Like usually we anticipate two or three days time. Like usually the last week of every month. So you can fix that payment. Thank you, Father. And the recorded videos are available on our YouTube channel. You could always retrieve and learn from them. Okay. 
thank you father or you can uh, yes. you can uh, you can send the, the youtube uh, uh, link to me first as sure and sex like our college channel is uh, st paul bible college i am writing now in the comment box st paul bible college so that channel youtube channel you will have all our previous videos not only of this course but we have other courses like basic hebrew basic greek and we we have even up we have inner freedom retreat lesson so they are you are welcome to see them good thank you mr ravi kumar thank you sir thank you then thank you for your okay. participation yes this is the three but uh, is it the assignment or today you will send to me or where i will send get? you by mail sister sure sister the last okay. one the assessment sheet yes sister thank you father thank you thank you everyone for your presence let us conclude with a prayer to our lady hail mary full of grace okay. the lord is with you blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of your womb jesus Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen.